watches us as we figure out nothing is happening. Are we live, Sadie? Mm hmm This is live. Okay. Recording, it's going. Awesome. I'm just gonna refresh again to see what happens because there's nothing happened with nothing on the page or on the first tablet. No. Okay. So well bear with us folks. It's the first time we've done this if you're tuning in and watching us. Uh oh, no, it's not gonna work. Okay. So I can't watch myself. You can't watch yourself? Just for, for whatever reason. I don't, I've done something wrong, maybe. Our Wi Fi is going slow, too, but it's like a thing. Maybe it's taking a long time. Right something just happened here. All right. We're just working out the kinks here <laughs> at 6 30. You know, that's one of the things that always seems to happen is we always have technical difficulties when we're trying new things, mm -hmm. no matter how many times. I went through this a few times today and it, it looked like it was going to work great. And then out of nowhere, it just kind of crashes right as we actually start up. So not that we weren't prepared or ready for that. It seems like that's always the case. Um, if you're tuning in on uh, First Baptist or Faith Assembly, welcome to the first time we do our pastor talk. Uh, pastor Hutch and myself, we're still trying to get uh, the interaction stuff to work on our laptop. So uh, Julie, would you open us in prayer? Sure. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this time that you've given us. This is a new experiment, a new way of looking at things of serving you. Thank you for the people who are standing by uh, to talk, to pray, to listen. Lord, we just commit this time into your hands that your Holy Spirit will work according to your will so that when this is done, it will be to the glory, honor, and praise of your holy name. Mm. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, folks are getting stuff to work on this thing too, so I hope we're, we're up and running, but um, we'll get there. So, oh, looks like the video is up. Somebody has already liked it on mine, so maybe that's how we'll get there. It looks like uh, Lisbon First Baptist is live too, so. I just I'm sure it is. I just don't have. <laughs> I can't see it, so we're struggling, but we'll get there. We'll I know my is still doing something, so okay. It's probably going to go a little slow. It says live. Okay, but oh, we lost the TV signal. What's that about? Okay, so if you're tuning in and you have a prayer request or something specific that you would like us to pray about, but you don't want everybody to know in the live feed below, that's okay. To 701-890-2077 and you can uh, let us know hey pastors I really appreciate it if you prayed for me because X Y and Z okay it's completely anonymous um, I'm not gonna shout out anybody I'm the one watching the, the text messages tonight and we're not gonna shout out anything like that nothing like that so uh, please if that's if that's something if you just need to talk to somebody or something like that option. Uh, looks like it's not gonna, that works on both TVs, by the way, if you wanna turn them both off. Okay. Um, might be the computer shut down too. Jeff? Yes, sir. I'm on, do I need to? Yep, just go ahead and hit play. No, you should be, oh, go ahead and mute it. Yep. A little um, bit of a delay there, it looks like. That's okay. So Hutch is up and running and I'm getting there. Tonight, the, the topic we're going to be discussing is prayer. Um, that we meet, the three of us, and some of the church, Joe Wiltsey, or, or we invite other pastors to be a part of it. We meet at uh, the Methodist Church. Pastor Julie is here with us tonight. We meet every Thursday at 11. Right? Because life happens, and sometimes Pastor Julie has to run to Fargo, or... Pastor Hutch is at a conference, or I'm at a retreat, or whatever the case may be. But we typically meet and we pray together. And we pray not just for our individual churches or for our own for our community. We pray for the town of Lisbon. We pray for Branson County. Um, and I think the, the thing we want to talk about tonight is, you know, why pray? 
What what is what do we expect when we pray? What prayer means and and trying to push anybody's church's agenda or anything like that or any kind of denominational doctrinal type thing necessarily, but just to sit together and just talk about this topic and and uh, what it means to us and what it means biblically and so on and so forth. So um, if you would, Hush, do you have any opening thoughts? Yeah. Um, this, this, it was, this has been coming to me over a period of years of being in prayer, um, praying over people, praying for people, praying for certain situations. And what I have, a number of years ago, I got to the point where I understood that prayer is communication with God. It's like taking the phone and calling up God's phone number and having a conversation with Him. A lot of people think that prayer is a one-way street. We pray to God and hopefully He'll answer our prayers uh, we pray to God and you know it's the little things we don't want to bother him with but the big things we we pray to him for but <clears throat> I want to get back uh, it is true communication but it's a two-way communication when I pray to the Lord there are things that I want to talk to him about not necessarily ask him questions but just discuss things talk to him about um, share my emotions with him even though he knows everything about me i want to share things with him but then what i've learned is i need to stop i need to shut my mouth i need to listen mm -hmm. be quiet and that is one of the hardest things for i for probably most people but for me it's extremely difficult for me to shut my brain off and just sit and listen very tough but Prayer is a two-way street. It's a two-way communication between God, and we need to understand that. Julie, do you have any thoughts? For, for, um, <clears throat> for me, um, my prayer life, the way I consider it now, the foundation of my prayer life was really laid by my mother and my grandmother. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in the atmosphere of personal prayer. Now, these were not technically educated people, mm -hmm. but they knew that there was a God to whom they were talking. And when they prayed, they prayed with understanding. And so I grew up in that. So when I come to know Jesus Christ for myself, I fought a little bit, you know, but then this foundation that was laid by my, grand, my mother and my grandmother really brought it together for me. So standing on that foundation, I know that every time I open my mouth to God, this is the God of my mother, my grandmother, this is a real being. I'm not just throwing my words in the air, yeah. but I know that I'm praying to a solid being who cares for me, who loves me. So that personal relationship is very important in prayer. If you don't have that understanding that this God listens to me and hears me, you will just pray and pray and pray. But is anyone listening? Pray. Yeah. I, th I think what one thing you're really hitting on is prayer is an act of faith. Absolutely. You know? And it's an act of, it's obviously an act of love, but it's also an act of hope. I mean, I was just talking about uh, to you guys before we started rolling how we're doing a series here at Faith on, on 1 Corinthians 13. <clears throat> and, and Paul talks in there, if I speak in tongues of angels or of men, without love, it doesn't matter. And, you know, without faith, we're just talking to a spot on the ceiling, you know. And, and kind of like what you were saying, Pastor Hutch, is, uh, you know, it's not a one-way street. God can speak to us. He speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through his Holy Spirit. Um, and I think that's something we forget. 
But my, my thought, you know, just kind of talking my personal history, I grew up, I didn't learn the value of the, the fact that prayer is, is a conversation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and it was just, you just tell the Lord. You just tell the Lord. What if God wants to tell me anything? You know, am I waiting on a lightning bolt or, or a flashing neon sign in the sky? You know, is, is God going to come through in a hurricane? And uh, for a long time, I wrestled with that, same thing with what you're talking about. And um, I think one thing we have to keep in mind is when we're praying, we're not just talking to, uh, how do I say this, like the operator. You remember the old Andy Griffith yeah. show, you know, hey, connect me to God. No, we're, our voice is carried into the throne room of heaven, and God the Father hears us. And that's a powerful thing to think about. That's a, a powerful thing is if we grasp the importance of that, you know, I, I think we would take prayer a lot more seriously. And, uh, you know, we talk about the Lord's Prayer, how to pray and things, but, you know, if we, if we say it in faith, we're praying in faith and we're, we know we're speaking to to Jesus, to God, you know, the Trinity, whatever you want to say, you know, some of the most powerful prayers are very short. You know, and, and when Peter was on the water and began to drown, what did he say? Lord, save me. And Jesus reached out his hand and saved him. So many times we, we hear people, <laughs> my favorite thing is whenever uh, you hear someone, oh Lord, thou art great. I'm like, whoa, you slipped back into English, you know, this. <laughs> you can pray and, and it's if it's from your heart, if it's you talk, it's you talking to God. Why, why try to make it fancy? It's it's a sincere. This is you talking to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And, and Pastor, the, the other thing is when we understand that the Spirit of God lives within mm -hmm. us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We are not talking to someone out there, but we are talking to someone who lives within us, mm -hmm. who takes our thoughts. That uh, uh, Paul says, "Who knows the minds of Christ except the Spirit of Christ?" Right. So, because we have the Spirit of Christ in us, even though we think we are talking, but He's monitoring and guiding what we are saying. Right. That's why it is important about renewing our minds, because mm -hmm. when our minds are renewed with the presence of the Holy Spirit living within us, we know that our prayers are going to the throne of grace because Jesus is there listening to us and his spirit is within us guiding our thoughts. I'm just trying to think, I'm trying to remember the verse off the top of my head, the spirit is, uh, when we pray, the spirit is praying and groanings and, and things mm -hmm. of that nature too, yeah. you know. Romans 8. Uh, Romans 8, I know it's in there yeah. somewhere, I don't want to misquote it. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's a great point. Um, and I think that it's it's one of those things that becomes so routine. If we aren't careful, mm -hmm. prayer life can become so mundane and so complacent. You know, I, I read a story recently. You guys know I'm kind of a, becoming a fan of Tom Rainer and some of the the autopsy of the deceased church. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he talks about in the, one of his books is when the church stops praying, the church starts dying. Yeah. And one of the stories he tells, and I'm probably going to butcher the story, so if you've picked up the book and you are hearing this and you're like, well, pastor, you butchered that, I know, I'm sorry. Uh, tell Tom Rainer, I'll send him a letter and a cheesecake or something. But anyway, he tells the story of this little church who used to have prayer meetings, and I believe it was on Wednesday nights. And they, when they were in a thriving church, when they were doing well, they were meeting and they were having a meal catered in. And the people just loved prayer meetings because they were having a catered meal. Mm -hmm. But as people began to leave the church and times got harder, they started doing a potluck. And one lady would bring the same casserole as the other thing, And so they stopped doing the food. And so he asked them, he said, so what, but why did you stop praying? And the lady said, well, I think we should have had the food catered in all along. And the guy said, you know, Tom Rainer, said, no, but why did you stop praying together? Well, because we stopped having the, the meal. 
You know, and if that's, and that's the, the whole point he gets to is, if it's about the tradition, if it's about the experience of just coming and, and talking to other people, you're missing the point of prayer. You're, you're missing the point of this is talking to God. So, anyway, that's that's one thing. Um, do you guys have any other thoughts? I'm sure I'm going to get one sooner or later. Yeah. <laughs> well, you said it's hard for your brain to shut yeah, off, but yeah. then it just clicks. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's easier for some of us to shut our brains off, <laughs> believe me. And, and prayer ought to be personal. That's why I don't like this too much written prayers. Mm -hmm. Prayer ought to come from, from the person's heart. Yeah. This is because most of these written prayers were written by people who were in different times different yeah. conditions, yeah. experiencing different things. They wrote this prayer based on where they were, what was going on. Now, when we when we copy those prayers into our bulletins, people just read them, they don't pray them, and I don't like them. So I like people to pray, talk to the living God, don't read. And sometimes I tell my people, don't read this prayer, pray it, make it your own. I think the one that as, as, a, as a model is what Jesus gave to his disciples. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, uh, we call it the Lord's Prayer. It's actually the disciples' prayer, if you think about it, because they're the ones who are told to pray. I had some notes on that, so I'm going to get into, I was saving this for later, but since you brought it up. You know, I, I break up the Lord's Prayer into about well, six different sections. Mm -hmm. You know, the beginning, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. You know, that's worship. That's praise. You're acknowledging who God is. You don't have to pray the Lord's Prayer exactly for it to mean something, but you follow the formula, right? It's a guide. Yeah. It's a it's guide. A, it's a, he right. says, pray then like this. He doesn't say, pray this exactly and you'll get all your wishes fulfilled. God's not a genie. You know, that's not. But he begins with our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. That's worship. That's praise. And then he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's submission. You know, I, not my will, your will, not my kingdom, your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven in both places. You know, and it, again, I think that's a little bit of worship as well, too, because you're acknowledging God's the same wherever he's at. Um, give us this day our daily bread. That's intercession. You know, when we're praying, uh, give us... You know, I'm interceding on my family's behalf, on other people's behalf. Uh, and then, and as we also forgive our debtors. That's repentance. You know, uh, Joel 2 talks about turning away. Um, I mentioned when, in our previous discussion before the cameras were rolling, John 8, Jesus doesn't tell the woman, go and tell your ex-boyfriend you're not going to see him anymore. He says, go and sin no more. That's repentance. And that's what he's saying. Forgive us our debts as we forgive others. You know, we, we've learned our lesson, Lord. You know, forgive me. And, and then and lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. That's praying for direction. You know, guide us. And then we, we mentioned earlier how some, for some translations take this out. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Again, that's worship. That's submission. And I think that that's the formula. We pray in worship. We pray in submission. We intercede. We repent. And we ask God for direction. And then for good measure, we worship some more. And yeah. again, the, the personal part of that prayer, you know that their father, he said, our, our father. Right. So that personal involvement, yeah. knowing God, clears out why we should talk to him through prayer. Yeah. Because we know him. He is our father. He cares about us. Whatever we are going through, he is there with us. And, and, and another thing, if we're gonna, if we're just gonna start dicing up the Lord's prayer, let's do it. But uh, our right there, that's unity. Yeah. Right, if you're watching this, these are three pastors, three different, well, four different, because Julie pastors a prison. Four different denominations represented at this table, and I know Hush, you don't consider yourself Baptist, Pentecostal, or anything. You're just everything. But that's you know that's the thing. We're united. Yeah. You know, and all yeah. and, and the thing is too, like our father, if I'm praying this, if I'm if Julie really ticks me off, if he makes me so mad, 
God, I just want you to smack Julie upside the face. Well, you know what? No, God's not going to do that. No. Because he's our father. father. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If, you, if you really hurt me, God might convict you, yeah. and you might come and apologize to me later, yeah. but then I'm going to feel really bad for seeing God <laughs> smack him upside the face. And so, you know, that's kind of that's kind of the thing we, yeah. we look at, too. Um, and so anyway, yeah, I think that's that's really interesting as we we talk about praying old prayers. Yeah. They're not bad per yeah. se, yeah. but they need to be personal. Yes, yeah. that's personal. the whole thing right there. Right. We have to take them. Yes. And as Pastor Julie said uh, a little bit ago, we because the Holy Spirit lives in us, Christ lives in us. When we pray, it has to be personal. It has to be one to the other. It's one on one, not one to a bunch of people or a bunch of people back. But it's so we need to use. It. Well, there are like the Lord's Prayer. I mean, everybody memorizes that. But with a lot of the other prayers, we can take those prayers and break them down and use our language. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes our prayer right. and not someone's prayer that they wrote right. a thousand years ago or whenever they wrote it. It's no longer their prayer. This is my prayer. I'm praying. Yes. And, and I've gotten away from saying I pray to the Lord. I talk to the Lord. I speak to him and he speaks back. Mm -hmm. So I get so it becomes more of a communication with me instead of the prayer is people when they pray it's always about like a grocery list right you need to all right lord this is what i need today here it is yeah. thank you yeah. and you go about your way and that is so impersonal that it just doesn't work that way and you're not saying it's wrong to have a list to oh no, pray. no 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 uh, not at all but it i think what you're saying is it still has to it has to hit us yeah. right like yeah. the you know I, I see what you're saying there That's well good. it in order we can have that grocery list but before we go to the grocery list, this, the guide that we have, we adore God, we praise Him, mm -hmm. we worship Him, and then we go down the list until we get to that point where, okay, Father, would you please things that I need, I feel that I need them in my life or what's going to happen today, I'm nervous about this, there we are, we're still, we're back to the communication of explaining what we're feeling, what we're going through, and God is right there listening, saying, okay, well, yeah, I'm gonna help you through this. Just relax, don't worry. So we get that personal relationship with God, like Adam and Eve, Eve had in the garden. Very personal, one-on-one -on -one discussions, that's what we were made for. Mm -hmm. And we've lost that. Do you think we've lost that because of what happened in the garden or because we've gotten away because Moses talked to God face yep. to face right yep. uh, you know we have asked if that's still possible I think it is in a sense you know oh, it's, yeah, absolutely. it's just it may look different for us but but I think at the same time you know when you say we've lost that we're not walking in the garden obviously but we can still communicate because of the cross the veil's torn we can get into the presence of the Lord you know, and I think that's something you're you're absolutely right. We missed the mark on that quite a bit. Yeah. Um, when when prayer becomes such a routine, and and I'm not saying that, but I don't I don't understand. I'm not I'm stumbling over my words. I'm not saying this to point the finger at another denomination or anything like that. But when prayers are offered up as a routine, it's it's. It's not as personal for the people. It's not as yeah. personal for the prayer, yeah. prayer, not prayer. But and I think that becomes problematic. Well, I agree. Uh, God wants us to speak with Him. Mm -hmm. He wants us to talk with Him. It's I, I I say it like this, and it covers the whole area of our relationship with God. He wants us to want to love Him. He wants us, therefore, to want. To have a conversation with him. He wants us to want to listen to him. Absolutely. He wants us, he wants us to have that relationship that the three of us have. We talk to each other. Mm -hmm. We commute or, or we um we don't gosh. respond to each other's texts or anything. Like yeah. <laughs> okay. So but that's and that's that's what he wants from us. 
So you're right. There are, uh, and, and like, a, you know, not going to point fingers at anybody, but there are um, religions out there that prayer, it's a ritual. Mm. It's, all right, this prayer needs to be said here, and this there. It becomes such a ritual that me, the prayer means nothing. Right. It's not personalized. So is God listening to that? God hears everything. I, he hears everything from everybody. Does he acknowledge those types of prayers? I would, I'm going to step out and say I, I don't think he does. He doesn't acknowledge those because they don't mean anything. Mm. It's not a personal, heartfelt um, communication. You know, there's something as uh, uh, I, I am learning, let me put it that way, I am learning about prayers because I address God as my father, mm -hmm. I have that respect for him, I know how I want to talk to him, mm -hmm. I know what I want to tell him, I know even if what I'm saying is not really the way I want to say it because he is my father he knows what I want to say but I cannot find the words to say it he understands that so I am not afraid to talk to my father because he is mm -hmm. he is my father but that doesn't mean that I disrespect him I give him his respect but I talk to him with confidence because I know this is my father if I don't talk to him there's nobody else I can talk to so that gives me that confidence that boldness to go to him and talk to him, even cry. I mean, I cry sometimes praying. I cry because this is my father. Right now. And he's, he's not troubled about my crying. He's not afraid of what I'm going to say. He's always ready and willing to hear whether I'm angry or sad or whatever. He is always ready. Um, someone said, God is not afraid of, of us. Uh, but he's also not intimidated by us. You know? mm -hmm. So that helps me in my prayer life. That I'm going to talk to my father. He's not afraid what I'm going to say. He knows what he's going to do with me. So I just talk to him as it comes to me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think the cliche is, well, I shouldn't even say it's cliche, I think there's some truth to it, is that sometimes we get so about the religion we forget the relationship. Right. Yeah, that's right. And that's kind of what you're talking about. The, the yeah. prayer that's religion, it's ritual, right. it's not relational. Right. right. And the one thing I, I hope we're stressing enough tonight is that you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You can have a relationship with God. And it begins with prayer. Yeah. And I think we all agree on that. Right. Um, you, you mentioned, you brought up kind of a point, how uh, you, you think God still hears it, but does he still act on it? And one thing we, we could discuss is hindered prayers. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at 1 Peter 3, and somebody, you know, I hope my wife is watching because I, I get this, but it says, now, Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. You know, God still hears the cry of his child. Mm -hmm. When you hear something like that, when you read something like that, where do you guys go with that? Because and I'll tell you what I think. It's not that God isn't hearing it, but what Pastor Julie's pointed out, you, have you, as you said, the Holy Spirit in us as believers, mm -hmm. there's that conviction of, oh, I've treated somebody, not even necessarily my wife, because, you know, Jesus said, do what you can to live at peace with everybody. Yeah. Right? So, uh, when you're not doing that, it's going to hinder your prayers because the conviction yep. is going to yep. hinder you. There's a, a pastor I know of, uh, Denny Curran, great guy. Don't know if he's watching us or not, but um, we're Facebook friends. Somebody texted and said, did we lose the internet? I hope we did not. I'm still seeing myself streaming, yeah, so. I think we're still here. Yeah, okay. They said, oh, there you are. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, but but Curran said, uh, this, this thing I was talking, it was a, a cohort for pastors. And he said, be aware of the sin in your life as a pastor. 
because it will follow you into the pulpit. Mm -hmm. And there are times, you know, where I know I'm forgiven. I know I'm in God's grace. And I, but I've, I've lost my temper earlier in the week, or I've driven on I-94, you know, or driven within Fargo, and that's standing her up, right? So I, I've had those moments where I'm preaching, and God will draw my attention, or the Holy Spirit, I think, will draw my attention to some of that. Like, hey, you really repent of this. It's like, you know, kind of in my mind, in my heart, I'm like, okay, God, I'm sorry. But then I think there are other times the enemy will also attack us as we're preaching and kind of say, and that, that is a hindrance to us as pastors, but I think even as lay people, as we're praying, as we're seeking the Lord, there is a hindrance there, you know? There's a, a hindrance to uh, our prayers, and it's our own condition in a sense, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Um, what we're talking about is our spread, and uh, the, the, the earlier part of this said, our Father who art in heaven, the next thing that follows is hallowed be thy name. That holy is your name reminds us of his holiness, his purity. That also reminds us of our sinfulness. Mm -hmm. And Psalm 66 verse 18 says, If I regard iniquities in my heart, the Lord will not hear my prayer. Right. So what you are saying is true. That's the reason why he said, when we address him as our father, the next thing we say is, you are holy. I am coming into your holy presence. Is there anything within me that will hinder that holy presence? Right. So that is very important because indeed, we want him to hear us, but if we, uh, Proverbs say, he who hides his iniquity will not prosper. Right. If there's something in our lives that we know, we know that is there, but we don't want to address it with our Father, that's not right. And we are not prepared to talk to Him because He knows that. So that's where we should begin. Am I ready to let go of me to my Father? Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to Him and He knows that. So that is very important. If I'm not ready to confess my sins to Him, to ask Him for forgiveness, then I'm not ready to talk to Him. I mean, plain and simple. You can't pray when you have sin. You don't clean up your life and then come to Jesus. Right. It's you come to Jesus so you can clean up your life. Exactly. Right? And yes. that's kind of the. So it, it's not that you have to be pure to come, but in His presence, you practice that right. purity. You ask Him to clean you yeah. up. Yeah. The the issue of the what you uh, uh, Jeff brought up mm -hmm. is. Um, Oh, how did you put I can't think of how you put it now. But what you were saying was brought took me right back to the garden. Oh, what hinders, you call it, what hinders yep. our prayer of re not reaching God, but hinders him answering our prayers mm. is the same thing as what happened in the garden. Mm. Right? Okay. Adam and Eve had a beautiful, personal, one on one, close knit, walking with God relationship. They sin that separated them. Mm -hmm. Anytime that we sin, like you're talking about, it separates us in a way that it hinders our communication. With Especially, it, it doesn't necessarily hinder their communication, but I'm going to so say in a specific area, it will hinder the response of God coming back to us when we are praying for something specific. Uh, you know, to help us with this, with that, and the other thing. I do believe that our sin hinders that reply from God mm. in some way. How I, I'm, I'm not going to tell you how because I don't know, but I believe it hinders it. So the, the uh, I don't. It was I think it was today when I was um, looking at this and praying about this and going over some stuff. There was a a question on the internet that said, do, does God hear prayers of, of people that don't have a, that relationship with Jesus? He hears everything. He doesn't turn a, he doesn't turn a deaf ear to people. He's listening. But the person that does not have that relationship with Christ doesn't have that, doesn't get back into that relationship right. with God. 
there there's still sep there's still that chasm so to speak between them and God that only Christ can can uh, uh, for uh, uh, like build a bridge to get over the chasm so in that respect a person that does not have a relationship with Jesus their prayers are are, are they're going to go unanswered. I'm going to say it that way for no other better phrase I'm coming up with. They will be unanswered until they confess and repent of their sins. Well, the way the way I'm understanding what you are saying is we are sitting in this building. We have all these lights on. If a tree were to fall and break the line that connects us with the power out there. If that tree were to fall on that line, cut it off, the power will still be flowing, but we will be in darkness. Yep. Why? Because right. there is no connection. Yep. That's so, a good, good way to put it. God is still there. The power is flowing. But when we don't have that connection with God, that light is not flowing in us. It's not that he's not hearing us. He's, he's hearing us. But we have no connection, and Christ is that connection. My, if, can I, my wife just sent me something here. Mm -hmm. Psalm 66, starting with verse 18. Yeah. If I regard iniquity in my heart, yeah. the Lord will not hear. Mm -hmm. But certainly God has heard me. He has attended to, my, to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not turned away from my prayer, nor his mercy from me. So, iniquity. It, it's that, like, I think that's a good analogy. You break the lines of power to this building, we're in the dark. Well, it's it's like, I, I don't remember who the author was who wrote, I, I've got a good commentary on the Lord's Prayer in my office somewhere, but when he says, forgive us our debts as we've forgiven our debtors, does that mean God doesn't forgive you if you ask for forgiveness? No, I think he does. He does. But you... You are still living in the bondage of that yeah, grudge and right. bitterness. And that's the one thing that's going to hinder that relationship. Oh, right. You know, it's just like I tell people all the time, Romans 8, you know, Romans 8 and 9, we, we go down that road another time. But from sin, he does not free you to sin. Mm -hmm. And grace, yes, Romans 6 too, you know, grace is there where we were the. Where the sin increases, the grace also increases. But Paul says, do we keep on sinning so the grace may increase? By no means. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. If if we are living as a Christian and we're living to to live that repentant life, we're we're living a sanct we, we use the term sanctified, a set apart, a holy life that God calls the Christian to. And yet we're still choosing to be enslaved by the sins that we've been set free from. And then you hear people say, well, I tried Christianity, but it just wasn't for me. It didn't no. fit with me. Well, did you really try Christ? Mm -hmm. You might have tried the religious, but did you try the relationship? Yeah. Did you yeah. did you, you tried the, the ritual, but did you try actually living what, what the Bible yeah. talks about? Because if you did, you'd experience a freedom you yeah. never knew you could have had before. And, and what you just said... Is the is the key to the whole thing? It's I tried religion and it didn't fit my mm. didn't fit me. What what people want? They want a religion. They want messages. They want blessings that fit their lifestyle. They don't want to. They don't want to change and commit to God's lifestyle. They refuse. They, as long as God will walk with them on their road, as long as the message that they hear every week is a message that makes them feel good and goes right along with their lifestyle, they're happy. But as soon as they hear a message that contradicts what they believe, contradicts their lifestyle, contradicts how they talk, what they do, that type of thing. Oh, well, I can't listen to this. This isn't right. This isn't God speaking to me. He's supposed to be on my side. 
well, he is on your side, but you're not on his. Right. And that's, that's it, you know, that's a big part of this whole issue. Yeah. Good word. Um, well, do we have any other thoughts? We've been doing this for almost 40 minutes. And we've only had a handful of technical difficulties yeah. and not pulled any of our hair out yet. Well, Julie pulled some out, looks like. But <laughs> <laughs> his response, you got to know Jeff. Um, <laughs> one thing, anyway, one thing I want to say yeah. is when I was a young Christian, uh, that's a long time ago. Yeah. In fact, it's, I'm not even sure you were born yet when I accepted <laughs> Jesus. Uh, April. Were you? Yep. You weren't very big, very old. No. Okay. I didn't have a beard yet. <laughs> you sure are. <laughs> Maybe. Um, I got into a routine. I was praying mm -hmm. from the heart. I know that for a fact. I was praying for, from the heart. But I would pray and pray. My, my prayers were long. And I did that for eight, ten years, ten, fifteen years of these long prayers, of all sorts of different prayers. And then I got a, I got a hold of the verse, which has helped me, where uh, the Lord says, "Don't pray like the the heathen, the heathens." Or no, don't pray like the Pharisees. Oh yeah, okay, yep. Using many, many, many words because they yeah, think they think God hears them better. So I took that to heart. And I've shortened my prayers up. And to this day, I consider a prayer is, good morning, Lord. My prayers are short to the point to, because I know God's listening to me. I don't have to go on and on and on and on. Now, recently, there's one prayer that's starting to get longer and it's purposeful. My prayers of thanksgiving. Mm because I'm seeing more and more and more that I need to be thankful for. So usually it's at mealtime. My prayers are getting, I mean, they're not 30 minute long, you know, being right. 20, 30 seconds, but the that's moment. a cold. Yeah, so it's, but in my mind, when we start thanking God for something, there's a bunch of stuff we need to be thanking him for. Right. You know. And with every with the virus going around the world right now, we need to thank them that we're well. Yeah. I mean, we got uh, COVID nineteen in the in the county. We have one case in the county. We're healthy. We're well. I have no fear of this virus. Even if I get it, I have no fear because the 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 best case scenario, and this sounds really weird to say, best case scenario. I get the virus, I die, and I am in the presence of God the rest of my, for eternity, the rest of my life. Right. Worst case scenario, I get the virus, I make it through, I have problems the rest of my life, but I'm here, but yet that's still a win-win situation because he's keeping me here and giving me another opportunity to glorify him. So I have no fear about anything that goes on in the world because God is my God. He's watching over me. He's caring for me, and um, I know I'm getting a little bit off, off topic here, but the one thing I believe, I believe in my heart, and no one's going to convince me otherwise. You got, I shouldn't say that, but it's going to take a lot to convince me otherwise, is we are immortal until God is done using us. I think it was David Livingston said that. You, oh, you're, really? Until you, until you fulfilled your calling, you're immortal. Okay. It's something along Yeah, something right along. And I believe that. Yeah, I think that's something. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. And you know, something you, as you were talking, something I thought of, um, you know, you're talking about longer prayers and, and prayers of thanksgiving. I found, and this is hard, it's very hard to do. And I hope this doesn't come across as, oh, Pastor Jeff said that he does this and he made it sound real easy. No, this is some of the hardest stuff to pray is a prayer of thanksgiving when you're really miserable. That's for sure. But I've noticed as I pray, you know, if I'm if I'm upset or I'm and I'm depressed, you know, this kind of weather that we've experienced the last couple of days here in Lisbon is depressing weather. 
right? It kind of it kind of can be that way. And it's like when I, I start to feel myself getting down, I've got to remember, Lord, thank you. You know what? My worst day as the pastor of Faith Assembly of God is some of the best days of my life. Yeah. Like I get to pastor in this yeah. town. And I know you guys feel the same way. And I and that's one thing. That's that's what well, you know, you're not pastor of Faith Assembly, but you're you know, you get to pastor in this town. But I could be. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you wouldn't hire me. <laughs> you, you have to have a bigger beard to pastor in this church. So. Uh, uh, <laughs> but you know, the thing is, I I I get up, I've never had a job in my life where I woke up and was excited to get to work until I was a pastor at this church. Mm-hmm. The way I am. You know, I get I get excited about being the pastor here. And and the, my like I'm saying is days when I feel down, days when I feel defeated, it's it's easy, yeah. It's easier and easier the more we yeah. practice it to, to give God praise and thanksgiving. The the reason why I just snickered here is there's a line from a movie. Okay. Which I cling to. I mean, this is cool. Is it Die Hard? It's a re- no. It's a, <laughs> it's a true story. Okay. The movie's called The Rookie. Oh yeah. With Dennis Quaid. Yep. The pitcher. Yep. Dennis Quaid walks in after he said he's, he's he tells the coach he's going to quit. He's got bills to pay. He goes out. He's having beer. He leaves the bar and he sees all these lights on. He walks over to the back of the ball field and it's Little League. Mm-hmm. And this one outfielder waves at him. He waves back. Next morning, he walks into the locker room, all smiles. He walks up behind Brooks. That's the the, the uh, uh, name of the of the player, the, the real player that was that um, was part of this true story. Right, and and Brooks is shaving in the mirror. He says, "Brooks, you know what we get to do today?" And Brooks looked and said, "What?" He says, we get to play baseball. <laughs> and why I cling to that is, you know what we get to do today? We get to glorify God one more time. Yeah. We get to be a part of his team. I'll tell you, that just, that that changes my attitude. I just, it changes my attitude. So, uh, it's cool. And, and you know who in this that glorifying God, it is this enemy, mm, yeah. Satan. Yeah. He is against <clears throat> anything called yep. prayer. Mm. Yep. Be- by the time you think about talking to God, he has already prepared a set of things that he will put in your way to distract you from talking to God. That's one of the reasons why we were talking about the hindrances to prayer. Sin is one of those things. Yep. Things that Satan can put in before us for us to think about instead of focusing on God. And he does that. The moment we focus on ourselves instead of focusing on God, we start talking to God, we start giving God the glory, we focus on ourselves. Oh, why this? Why this? Instead of the person to whom we are talking. So in my own life, when I sense that, I do one, two, or three things. If I am praying and these thoughts are coming, either I start quoting Bible verses that will help me stay focused, Mm -hmm. or I start singing a song that my soul loves, the song that will keep me focus instead of going on the tangent or I started um, just asking God to help me through this because what happens is when you are praying and these thoughts come into your mind and you start praying Satan succeeds right. yeah good point he will always do that anytime you want to talk to God he will throw these things on you so that you will not get through but Keep on praying. Do something that will make his voice go away. Jesus said to him, Satan, get behind me. Mm-hmm. So our prayers can focus on God when our minds are set on God. When there are distractions coming into our minds, let us not quit. Right. 
let us keep on praying, keep on talking to God because the voice of the enemy does not want to allow us to talk to our Father so that we will give him the glory. And thanksgiving is when we are thanking God for his blessing, Satan said, no, you don't have any blessing. What should you thank him for? So it makes it difficult for us to continue thanking God. So that's another thing in our prayer life that we should watch for. When I am praying, where is my mind? Yeah. What happens in my mind? Am I focused on the one I'm talking with or is my mind running all over the place? Yeah. Yeah. We talked about prayers of thanksgiving kind of changing our attitude about our circumstances. Another thing to think about too is if you have a problem with somebody, obviously Jesus says go to them, but if you're not there yet, where you can do that. Say uh, Jim Bob, and that's a generic name. I don't know anybody named Jim Bob, yeah. at least not here in Lisbon, right? Uh, say Jim Bob really hurt my feelings and said something. And it's just every time I'm around Jim Bob, he's just horrible to me, you know? You know what I found is I go and I pray for that person. Yep. And God may or may not change Jim Bob, but I'll tell you who he will change. Absolutely. Jesus, that's me. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I have been doing that for years. You haven't known me that long. Man. <laughs> I know the spirit inside you. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's good we can laugh about this. <laughs> yeah. People no. watching at home now, going, wow. Now, okay. now I'm sitting between death and death, <laughs> so everybody knows that. Oh, no, man. I, I learned that many, many years ago that when we don't no, it, it's part of for, forgiveness is part of this when we don't forgive mm -hmm. or when we when we don't pray for someone that has hurt us um in whatever way we are chained to them yeah. mm -hmm. we are yeah. fettered to them by unforgiveness exactly. so the first thing is to um to forgive that person and then pray for that person and we change I've experienced it. It happens exactly the way you said. It works. And we change for the better. You know, and people say, well, they hurt me. I'm not going to forgive them. You know, they need to change, not me. Yeah. Wrong. Our heart needs to change. Absolutely. So I've shared the story at, uh, at uh, the Baptist church where I pastor here in town. Um, a very it was a hard lesson but it was a good lesson uh, my dad and I did not have a good relationship and a lot of years after I accepted Jesus uh, he accepted Jesus shortly after I did mm -hmm. probably three years two or three years afterwards and but there was such bitterness between us on my part toward him mm -hmm. for things when I was growing up I would, until it got to where um, it was okay but it wasn't the best and um, I, the Lord told me, you need to forgive your father and you need to pray for him. And so the first time I forgave him, I forgave him out of obedience, not because I wanted to. Mm. The seventh time I forgave my dad for the same issue, it was over. Mm. It took seven times for me to forgive him from the heart and pray for him for the, from the heart. Mm. But I was doing it because of obedience obedience to God so I was being blessed even though it was I was doing something I really didn't want to do I was still being blessed because I was being obedient prayer is the same thing we need to pray we need to pray for ourselves our families our friends we need to pray for people around the world I mean if we pray for everybody we should be praying for we'd never be able to sleep right it'd be 24 24 7 we'd never be able to sleep but it, we need to be praying for people. It is that important, and the blessings are incredible. Uh, I, I'm talking about forgiving uh, people in prayer, a question that I, I get uh, from many people is, someone did something to me. I pray to forgive them. They never ask for forgiveness. But I pray to forgive them. Would, would that forgiveness be genuine? Would it be uh, 
truth from my heart, even though this person did not ask for forgiveness. Well, God did not say that the only time you are forgiven and will hold is when the person comes to you and asks yeah, for forgiveness. Right, that's right. Yeah. So yours is to lose that, to let it go. It's left with a person. If they can't find, they don't come find, but you have done your part. Right. And then the other thing attached to that is when when I forgive, do I forget? What happens if I don't forget? Well, forgetfulness is not something that people want. I don't want to forget things. Mm -hmm. But what I don't want to do is to use things against people. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. I may forgive, but still don't forget what has happened because it has become part of my life. Mm -hmm. But what the Spirit expects me to do is not to use that against the person. Mm -hmm. And that's what forgiveness mm -hmm. is. It's not because you forgive me that you will forget what has happened to you. Yeah. But you don't want what has happened to you to hinder your relationship. Right. That is the key point yeah. in prayer. Yeah. You don't bring that back again to use it against that person. Because that is why God said, I will forgive their sins and remember them no more. Yeah. You think God can forget? Yeah. God doesn't have a mind that can forget. Right. But he does not go to bring that back and use them against yeah. us. I say it, I put it like this. It may be wrong, but I put it like this anyway. God chooses not to remember. Mm. Right. For his children, Amen. for his children, his adopted children, he chooses not to remember right. our, sins our sins because of our relationship with his son. Right. right. He doesn't hold it against us. He doesn't hold it against us at yes. all. Yep. Right. Right. And praise God for that. Right. Amen. Right. So, Amen. yeah. Yeah, I think whenever it comes to forgiving, you know, one thing I, I've heard people say, and, I, and I'm trying really hard to put this into my life too, especially lately, is I'm not a perfect person, obviously. Right? None of us. Right. <laughs> Some of us more than others are more than perfect, I guess. Maybe I just have a, someone in my my life, my wife, who likes to point out. I know, I'm just kidding. Um, you got to go home, you know. I know, yeah. but she's not watching, so we're good. Oh. But <laughs> she's probably putting the kids to bed. Uh, but you know, what I'm learning is saying I'm sorry is a lot different than saying I know I messed up. Will you forgive me? Yeah, yeah. You know, and and. To say I'm sorry, well, Julie, I'm sorry. That puts the ball in my court. You have to forgive me now because I said I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But if I say, could I, could you please forgive me? You know, then it becomes, oh, yeah. the ball's in your court. Right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Right. but I've done my part. Right? That's right. Yeah. And the thing is, too, you know, I've wronged a lot of people. I'll never get the chance to say, will you forgive me? You know, or I'm sorry, you would think. But you, you, you said a key word, obedience. You know, when we're doing, we have to put that behind us and move forward in obedience. You know, I, I have to, you have to forgive yourself. In a lot of ways. Um, um, that's not to say that our forgiveness for ourselves is greater than God. But there are times where you can't get past yourself. James Dobson has a book called uh, When God Doesn't Make Sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there, there's a lot of times where people get hurt. And like the last chapter, or maybe it's the second to last chapter, he says the one thing that helps some people move on is forgiving God, which sounds yeah. blasphemous. Yeah. It really does. But to be able to move forward in any relationship where there has been hurt that's mm -hmm. occurred, forgiveness has to occur. Mm -hmm. And if you're so bitter and angry at God for allowing something to happen, Maybe try forgiving and then living in his forgiveness, yeah. you know? And again, I'm not saying that that's biblical. I just know James Dobson says that, and I'll roll, I'll roll with it for right now. Yeah. But, uh, you know, when on the topic of forgiveness and, and how it impacts our prayers, there are a lot of times I don't feel like praying. There are a lot of times, I'm sorry, I said forgiveness. I'm in obedience. Mm -hmm. I'm on the topic of obedience and praying. There are times I don't feel like praying. There are times I wish I could be doing anything else but praying. 
you know, um, we have here at Faith Assembly Thursday nights at 7 p.m. We have a prayer meeting, and we've we've kept that up through COVID-19. We've never had more than 10 people show up. Mm -hmm. You know, we've covered even whenever we distancing, we try to stay six feet away from one another, and so on. Just for the lawyers who might be watching, but <laughs> but you know, there are times Thursday nights. I'd rather be home with my family. Yeah. You know, I, I'd rather go do something else. But you know what? Obedience. And again, I go back to the fact that the church that stops praying starts to die. Mm -hmm. And so, the, and the same is true, not just for the church, but for the, the for Christian. The as yeah. an individual, yeah. if we stop praying, yeah. we start dying spiritually. Yeah. And when, when prayer feels like a chore, Pray. It's a ritual. Pray anyway, mm -hmm. you know. And it, you know what? The, like you said, God still hears it. Yep. And if prayer feels, I'll tell you what. Whatever prayer feels like, pray anyway. Yeah. And that's that is how we overcome. Yeah. yeah. One thing that I've touched on, and I think it needs to be mentioned, is prayer. And I'll say it. Yeah, prayer is the most powerful tool that we have for healing, mm -hmm. for, for forgiveness, for um, protection, you name it, prayer, because we are calling on the name of, we're, because when we pray it correctly, we're praying Jesus, the name of Jesus Christ is the most powerful name ever spoken anywhere at any time throughout eternity and as adopted sons and daughters of Christ he has given us the authority to use his name to pray in his name mm -hmm. when we pray correctly we're using the power of his name we're not using our power we're not praying to God and saying well maybe he'll answer it maybe he won't maybe he heard me maybe he didn't he did, and I, I'm a firm believer that when we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our prayers are answered. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that they're going to be answered when I want them answered. It means God is going to answer them at the right time. He is righteous, and he's faithful, so our prayers are answered. I tell people, uh, prayers are answered in a number of ways. And a lot of times I'll, I'll pick an illness. We can pray over a person, lay hands on them, pray over a person, and they are healed instantly. Mm -hmm. My alcoholism was. Mm -hmm. um, we can pray, and it might take med medication, and we're healed. We can pray, and it might take a surgeon, surgery. Or we can pray, and at the moment that we go from the physical world to the spiritual world, we are healed perfectly. And perfectly. I think, too, on the topic of healing and praying for healing, we, we so often we focus on the physical healing, but, and, and, and I'm not trying to discredit or say I don't believe, I, I mean, I'm Pentecostal, I believe in, in legitimate signs and wonders, you know. I, I've seen people healed physically, mm -hmm. and I, I, but I think we undervalue sometimes the importance of the healing of the human heart that turns to God. Yeah. You know, that is the most powerful <laughs> healing yeah. that takes place. Absolutely. And, and you say, you know, the timing, but also how people are healed. You know, a person who comes up and they're on crutches or, or whatever the case is that, that wants healing, that needs healing, and they may not experience that, but they have a sincere move of the Holy Spirit in their life or something. That's better than anything oh, else. Yeah. You know, and, and thank God we live in a society right now that, you know, I, I, I do not mean to say that to undervalue those who might have a disability or whatever, but, but people can function. We have prosthetic limbs now, right? We have, mm -hmm. we have people who can move their fingers and they're not even their fingers, they're robotic fingers, you know, things like that that are these technological advances that happen every day. 
But the most powerful thing that happens is a life changed by the power of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And when we're praying for someone, I I can tell you, I know enough people that that have had physical healing. But if they walk out the door and their personal life didn't change at all, what did it matter? Yeah. Because God can heal a human body. Yeah. But if he didn't heal their heart, it was all for nothing. Agreed. You know? Yeah. I, I had this conversation with someone recently. You know, why didn't God heal this relative of mine who passed away? And I said, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. And I don't think anybody in their right mind would. Hopefully. <laughs> right? But I think my, my question then was like, well, what if God did heal them? Jesus literally raised Lazarus from the dead. But you know what happened? Lazarus still died. He died again. Yeah. Second time. Right. And the thing is, Jesus is the only one who died and didn't die again, right? He's the first of the resurrected. Not... But let's say God healed this relative, and then six months later they died in a car crash. You're back asking the same question. Mm -hmm. What if 60 years later, the guy is 120, you still have a cross in his back? You know what I mean? Like, why did he die? Well, he's old. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, it happens. But did God change their heart? That's the most important thing we can pray for. Yeah. Did God change my heart? Yeah. You know, and I can tell you, I know me. I know Jeff. And if if God can change my heart, man, he can heal. Healing a, a missing hand or, or whatever is nothing, yeah. you know. So I think... You're absolutely right. I think that at some point God's going to bring that healing, uh, this side of the grave or the next. But getting focused on, on that, first and foremost, God is not our genie. When we're praying, we're not rubbing the magic lamp or anything like that. But what we, what we really need to understand is the most powerful healing he ever does is a life change. Amen. Agreed. And, 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 and the... the the, the sustenance of that life change. Mm -hmm. The way that change life survives is prayer. Yeah. But prayer is the the lifeline for this deep sea diver. The oxygen tank that this deep sea diver needs to survive under the sea. We are under the sea. We need that line connected mm -hmm. with our Father mm -hmm. to keep us alive mm -hmm. under this sea of attack mm -hmm. that we are under. Absolutely. And prayer is that line. Absolutely. Wow. That's why, again, the church that does not pray is dead. Not that it's dying, it's dead. Yeah. Because yeah. there's no life in it. Yeah. That's a good point. It's like driving your car without oil. Uh, yeah. Which, Amen. by the way, you have to change <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> Not that that's the voice of experience. <laughs> I've heard stories. Okay. You know what, guys? Let's, it's, uh, we've been doing this for over an hour now. Pastor Hutch, why don't you close us out in prayer? All right. Amen. And I invite everyone that is listening to pray with me. Father, we give you thanks for um, uh, giving us this time this evening and uh, giving this time every, every Tuesday evening to come and discuss topics and issues uh, all for your glory, not for ours. Yes, Lord. We thank you that uh, we can do this together and share our opinions, share our how we look at things. And uh, it's amazing to me how the three of us here uh, think so much alike and understand so, so many things pretty close to the same way. So we thank you for that. We thank you that we can we can come together and talk about things and be a team for this community, also for each other's church. Father, we also thank you that you have spoken through us tonight, through, uh, through the Holy Spirit, that our words have given you glory, that we have carried this topic uh, tonight to its conclusion. Father, I pray that you will bless everyone that has listened tonight in a mighty way bless their hearts bless them in a way that they will look at prayer as a very personal 
uh, way of communicating with you. Let them understand that it's a two-way street. When they get done praying, they just need to stop and be quiet and listen for your voice, and you will speak to them. Help us to understand the power of prayer in every sense of the word. And help us to use prayer every single day. Prayer to change us. Prayer to help those that need help. Prayer that when we lay hands on, people are healed. Most of the time, not the way that we pray. Because you know exactly how a person needs to be healed. We don't. Help us, Lord, to be a praying church. Each one of our churches. And for those folks out that are listening to us tonight that go to other churches, we pray that they will begin to pray for their church. That they will look at putting a prayer team together if they don't have one to pray for their church. Because if they don't, that church will die. We've seen that happen in the past. So Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for uh, working through us and speaking through us. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for loving everyone that's listened to this tonight and working in all of our hearts. I pray this in the precious, precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. No, no problem. Yes. Yes. This was fun. This is nice. Oh, we can do this again. Yeah. Well, I think we should, we think we should, we should just set this Tuesday nights apart for this.